Welcome back to Garage Shop again. We're gonna go ahead and take a little bit of a break from the Sportsman Teardown and uh, do a little, something a little different. We're gonna give uh, the Daily Driver, the Burbinator, some love. Uh, we're gonna do a simple upgrade to it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and update head units in it. Uh, head units now is an older Sony unit. Uh, it's starting to kind of glitch out and have problems. And uh, I got a chance to have uh, Boston me out this uh, refurb unit off Amazon. So we're gonna check this out, see if it's any good. It's the uh, Boss BE. What is this? The Boss BE9 uh, ACP. Yeah, that's what it is. Comes in a pretty basic brown box and uh, tells you what it is on the side. So, because I've never had a refurbished head unit, I've had a lot of used head units, but never a refurbished one. So, I'm gonna go ahead and set you guys on the tripod and open this box, see what's in it. Then, I'm gonna go get the uh, Suburban pulled around here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the Sony and bring it in here take the wiring harness off the back and go ahead and switch it over to this one and try to get this thing installed. All right, guys, I want to apologize for the mess on this bench here. I got to get back to cleaning the shop up a little bit. It's getting kind of out of hand here again. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and open up this box. Uh, this is not your typical everyday head unit. This is a 9.1 inch touchscreen uh, external display, I guess you could say. It's a uh, Sets in a single DIN chassis, which if you guys know, my Suburban's an 01. It has the DIN and a half uh, head unit in it, so I'm pretty much stuck to a DIN head unit. So I've seen one of these actually in a uh, GMT 800, an early GMT 800 truck, and it works really well. I had the option between this one and the 10-inch one. Uh, the one I seen was the 9-inch, so that's why I went ahead and went with the 9-inch screen. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and open this bad boy up. All right, I see the head unit now. It comes in nice foam packaging here. That looks good. It doesn't even look used. So, yeah, it looks pretty good. And there's the head unit. I love the display. I think it's huge. Uh, one thing in my Dodge Ram that I had, I got really used to the big screen that I had, so I'm kind of happy I went to uh, a big screen again. And having an actual functional volume knob is one of my favorite things, so I like having an actual volume knob. And uh, that's, this had uh, a volume knob, so that's kind of nice too. It's heavy. Uh, this is definitely feels pretty sturdy. It actually feels quite nice. It's pretty tight in the uh, adjustment to the screen too, that's nice. That would be kind of important. You don't want your screen just falling around. We have uh, mounting for making a double den. They do have a way to make it a double den kit. Uh, if you go in here, got the remover tool, to get it out of the cage, got a microphone, got a plug, and uh, yeah, all your fancy stuff you need. So we'll go over a little more of that probably when I wire it up. And uh, now we gotta go ahead and get the unit out itself. Here it is. I guess you poke these two buttons to release the screen. Go ahead and get rid of that box. And uh, yeah. Thing looks pretty good. It's not ginormous either. I think it's actually smaller than a traditional CD player. I'll have to compare it to my Sony when I get the Sony out. But uh, that's kind of nice too. It gives you a little extra room behind the head unit. The space in that uh, truck's a little, little, little light, I should say. It also sticks out here, so that's all that's going to be in your dash. Got some decent I.O. on the back. Not uh, too, too crazy, but we do have uh, three channel out. Uh, front, rear, and subwoofer. And you got video in and audio in, so you can do just a simple composite input. So nothing too crazy there, not any HDMI or anything like that. It does have uh, USB charging and then a Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. That's the big thing that this radio had that I really, really wanted. So yeah, and it does have a front camera input and I believe this is the rear camera input. We are going to be putting a uh, backup camera in the Suburban at some point in time, but uh, probably not tonight. 
and then we do have the microphone input don't think I'm gonna wire up the microphone input tonight either uh, just because time and it's dark out already so just want to go ahead and get this wired in for tonight and just get to testing on this thing and see if it's uh, see how good it is so I'm gonna go ahead and bring the suburb around and pull out the uh, old Sony all right guys I apologize for the mess in here it is a daily driver so it gets kind of messy in here so my favorite thing about a early generation GMT uh, 800 platform truck is how easy it is to take the radio out of one of these trucks it's super easy first I'm gonna go ahead and eject the CD in here because I know it does have a CD in it so I'm gonna get that out of there put that back in its case I do lose a CD player functionality with this radio but that's not a big deal I hardly listen to CDs anymore so yeah, we'll go ahead and rip this uh, out of here real quick. Go ahead and uh, put your truck down in the first. Take your steering wheel pour all the way down. Listen to the wonderful amps kick on because I have a bad ground loop in this radio and I'm hoping the boss will help a little bit, but I'm not guaranteeing it will, but we'll see. Go ahead and pop the cluster out around it, the bezel. Break one? No. Just stuff falling down. Break one? No. No, it's good. So we're going to set this over here in the passenger seat. Not on the CD I took out. Let's go ahead and grab my, one of my pictures of the family there. Go ahead and put this back in the park I do. It does make getting this out kind of a pain. So actually we'll pull it out then we'll shut the key off because I don't want the radio on when I unplug it. Push these two tabs down radio comes out that easy guys and apparently something on this setup is extremely tight uh, and on this radio I've been using just two channel output and I don't know if it's is it the RCA's yeah the RCA's are very pretty pretty tight on this so I'm gonna go ahead and snap a picture of I can't remember if sub is on top or not just so I remember my RCA placement there we go perfect yep now we can see the back RCAs and we will probably actually hook these other RCAs up that we have because we do happen to have the other the other uh, rear RCAs so we can put the amp in four channel mode and unplug these these are NZXT or not NZXT <laughs> NVX uh, RCAs for the sub and four channel. For some reason, we are stupid tight in this truck, and I'm not real sure why the harness is so tight. I guess I must have just shoved it back there to be a pain, and uh, this does have a splitter that I built because we are bypassing, well actually we still power up the factory amp, but uh, we are actually bypassing it. It probably don't actually need to be on anymore, but we are still gonna do it the same way that we did. I'm going go ahead and plug it. So I'll remember I need to put a uh, female uh, spade connector on the remote. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. This truck needs a little bit of wiring overhaul at some point in its life, but it shouldn't be too bad now. I'm going to unplug the antenna adapter, and we have the radio out. That would have been a lot faster if I didn't have to know where my RCAs went. And take the keys out, and we're going to go ahead inside and start up wiring this bad boy. Okay, got it in here. Went ahead and pulled the face and trim plate off. The old Sony MEX. N4200BT has been a good radio for me for a long time. I actually got this out of a junk car years ago, and uh, it's done well. It's been having some issues here lately. I heard the uh, stereo whine. I don't know if that's the amplifiers itself or this head unit, but that's been gradually getting worse. Uh, a lot of weird audio issues. It'll get garbled at some point, and then this crash and have all kinds of problems when it's streaming audio through Bluetooth. And obviously it does not have Apple CarPlay. Uh, 
Fortunately though, I've done enough Sony's in my life that I keep a, pair set, a spare set of tools to pop it out of the uh, basket here, which is nice. And I definitely will throw the bosses over in the uh, drawer as well. Go ahead and disconnect the plug. We'll have to unwrap this really nice Tessa tape that I take Tessa tape job I did and uh, start matching up colors. And yes, we'll do the comparison just to prove to you guys. It is two melon notches. It is a tad bit shallower than the CD player, the Sony that I had in there. So that won't be a problem with mounting it flush at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll go ahead and probably do a quick little speed up of this clip to get that basket out of there because I know that's gonna be a fun job. All right. That was pretty easy actually. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this back together. And keep it around. What is your problem? There we go. Keep all the pieces and parts to it. And uh, just keep it around in case I have problems or just need a head unit for something. In case I get a turd that needs a radio. Which around this channel happens a lot more than I'd like to admit. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and unravel this. I've got some solder and some tools and that soldering iron. i got to get some heat shrink. But we're going to go ahead and start making this adapter to this adapter. One thing, other thing I like about the early GMT 800 platform trucks, the 9802, is it doesn't require the box to run everything. So that's A-OK -okay on my, my opinion. There. So go ahead and get this unraveled. All right, so I got it disconnected. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take some alcohol and clean off all the fuzz from the Tessa tape that I had wrapped on there, and we will start doing this. Okay, for some reason I couldn't find my rubbing alcohol, so let's go ahead and try some paint cleaner, not paint cleaner, but a glass cleaner, and see how that does. Alright guys, I'll give this uh, boss one big thing credit. They individually t labeled all of their wires and they also have a color code and whatever thing is on the top of the radio so it's kind of hard to mess up. I am going to take these little tags off and put some heat shrink on this, solder the joints together. I could make this a little shorter but as you guys seen this was a little, when it was about this long, it was a little short under the dash there so we'll make this a tad bit longer for this setup and we'll keep this kind of all equally length anyways so we'll go ahead and just get everything ready solder everything up and uh get her all done i guess get it all all done up and of course my battery is dead apparently every 12 volt battery i have today is dead so that's handy Got a couple on the charger, so we may have to actually wait for some stuff to charge. Uh-oh, lost all juicage. Ooh, this one says it's fully charged. I already know it's not, but. This being, it's a relatively inexpensive radio. It does have a parking brake input, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and ground it out on the ground wire. So now we have all of the audio 
is hooked up, everything's hooked up. I've got to slide all the heat shrink up, heat shrink everything, but for the most part, we have everything hooked up. We have a couple of reverse inputs. That's uh, purple and white. I'm gonna go ahead and solder a wire onto that because I can. I have a place I can tap into that for the uh, uh, reverse inputs. And this does have cam front pa camera power because this does have the capability of having a front camera input and a rear camera input, which is pretty nice. Uh, then we have a rear camera power. They're both 500 milliamp. Uh, they say that on there. Yeah, where's that? Yeah, antenna 12. Yeah, everything on this, the 12 volt antenna output is 500 milliamp. And the, uh, where is the, yeah, the remote, yeah, the remote output, 12 volt, 500 milliamp. We're gonna put a spade on that. That's plenty to turn on everything. So really it's all just kicking on relays at that point on that side of things. So I do need to slide up my uh, heat shrink, get my heat shrink up. And then we'll go ahead and get a wire for the reverse. And uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and speed that back up again for you guys. So you don't have to set for the boring of that. I'm not gonna worry about cameras. I'm gonna probably tape them in their own little harness to the side for right now. And I'll put cameras on later. I may actually put a front facing camera on this thing because it is a giant pig. And it does have that big HD hood and it's hard to see over that sometimes. Battery's dead already. Big surprise. I did find one of these that I had left over from a project. It's actually from Grandpa. I just haven't installed it yet. I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna get another one. I'm gonna go ahead and install it in the Suburban. Uh, this is a USB aux uh, cord adapter. I'm gonna put this in the center console so my USB for my phone could come out the center console and not off the bottom of the dash or something. So I'll go ahead and pull out my cup holders and just drill out the spot where there's supposed to be accessory plug in the actual uh, console inside of it. And I'll just go ahead and put this in there and then feed this up towards the radio. And uh, that'll be that. I'm gonna go ahead, I'll do that off camera. I won't put you guys for having to deal with that because I don't really have a good way to record that right now and it's dark outside, so probably won't be fun for me to uh, route it anyways. I'm gonna go ahead, put the basket in the dash. From far as I can tell, this basket's the same for both directions. So I'll go ahead and put the basket in the dash kit. And uh, put a couple of them tabs and we'll go ahead and start putting everything in. Test world, make sure it works, and then we can, we can go ahead and get everything in where it's supposed to be. All right, so I got that all wired up like I did. I did add a spay connection for the remote turn on. So, the nice part about this is you don't have to worry about scratching the screen putting it in because. Pay no screen. First thing I'm gonna do, I did get my uh, piece in the glove box. I'll show you when I'm done. But I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in now. And uh, go ahead and get that plugged in. It's kind of a loose connection, so I like to tape uh, connections under the dash like that just because there's a good chance it might come out eventually. So this will come back out later like I said for the microphone install I'm gonna integrate that into the factory microphone up top for the OnStar that this had on it from a, from the factory uh, so that's hooked up now I'm gonna go ahead and run the gray wire for the reverse I'm just gonna poke it down the dash and hopefully I can find it 
I'll go ahead and wrap this up and tape it for right now and eventually we'll get it I'll do probably a separate video of the backup install backup camera install and how I'm gonna do it in this truck and I'll show you how to tap into this reverse source um, one of my old videos of putting a backup camera in the O2 Silverado it shows you how to get in that uh, backup source as well so pretty simple I did actually go back to my amps to take a better picture of my RCA hookups so I have the proper color uh, coordination this is mono for the sub so it does not matter how it connects to the head unit but to do the right to get the fade and stuff correct on the uh, front and rear I do have to hook them up correctly or they'll be backwards and I have to modify back there on my amp rack which it's all nice and put down nice and tidy so I don't want to have to do that all done okay so we can actually bring our connection over here and find my connection here which is right there okay so you guys can see that a little exposed so once again we will provide some tape security because you don't have any sound other than the two little rear speakers out the back that's hooked up to the factory amplifier still you lose that connection okay so now we have that hooked up like where it's supposed to go steering controls all that stuff we'll worry about that later uh, now we can go ahead and set all this stuff in the dash sorry I keep bumping into you guys oh, and then we have, oh, I knew that was gonna happen oh, you guys have a fun ride there all right fit sweet all right i'm gonna go grab the screen and we can test this bad boy out i'm sorry if that's been out of focus the whole time the lighting in here is kind of crap so my apologies i'm gonna go probably actually wash my hands real quick so i don't uh, dirty up the screen too bad we'll put it on there and see and test it and see if it works all right now i'm back got my hands washed and shut that off Put it into kind of, I don't know, we'll see how what it does. Got the screen here. It definitely might, definitely just got some smudges. Ooh, at least we have a, some lightage. Our screen's not coming on though. We don't have a screen, so that's always a good sign. Let's go ahead and do a reset. There we go, we got a screen now. And put that in gear shifter out of the way. Obviously, when the shifter's apart, it's gonna be kind of a pain to deal with, but uh, yeah, let's actually see if we get some radio stations. Turn the volume down. So zero, for some reason, I can still hear music or volume, so that's kind of handy. <laughs> I wonder if you have poking. Okay, poking hold the volume button mutes it. So let's go ahead and plug a iPhone device in and see what we get for, uh, for charging. Our Apple CarPlay kicks in. It's good. Oh, we're playing uh, Nickelback. Oh yeah, look at that screen, that's huge. The screen quality is not the greatest, but it is, uh, it does look pretty good. And you apparently can, you can adjust uh, EQ from the volume, so that's nice. And mute that. Apparently when you touch that, it automatically messes with the volume. Okay, well, we're just going to force this thing to stop playing music, okay? So then we got home, which has got our location, music, messages, all that stuff, the boss, elite system, Android Auto doesn't come up, USB's not doing anything, we don't, I'm not Bluetooth streaming, camera, obviously we don't have any signal, but yeah, this definitely would be nice to be able to see the, uh, 
Uh, got AV in, so if we get some AV in, we can... Actually, this would be a good if you did uh, get a, some AV, so this screen's big enough and doesn't look too bad, I think you could actually do some stuff with the screen because it's big. The downfall is it does kind of cover up the AC controls a bit, but I kind of know where everything is, so that's not a problem. I have to look in this. I don't think you can adjust it any, but that's not bad. I know where everything is. That's temperature and yeah, all that stuff, so I can automatic. Always flip that up. But yeah, so we got our tuner. What do you make of this? this do have a little bit of sound coming through. UFOs and think there's absolutely no aliens involved. What? So we do have a little bit of music com music coming through. Well, I mean, do have a little bit of music coming through. Siri works. Home button works. Mode no AV input tuner Apple CarPlay. Oh, it must apparently let you change your sound, or not your sound, but uh, your uh, source without actually having to leave Apple CarPlay. So let's go home, go into some settings here, see how this some of these settings are. Time zone, it says 926, so apparently it must set through Apple CarPlay, that's pretty nice. System tone, might turn that off, power delay off, You can. that's kind of cool. Time zone, date and time. Let's see if the date is correct. It's two, it's the 13th to 23, so that works. 12 hour format, 24 hour format. That's, we do the 12 hours just fine for me. Uh, time zone, uh, we're not Pacific time, so let's go ahead and, or central time, US Canada. It's now messed up the time. So let's go ahead and back it down to the right time. Actually, 927 by that. Let's go ahead and back out of the time. Time zone set, daylight saving time is not present. Uh, subwoofer on, subwoofer filter. Uh, we're gonna go to 80 hertz. Subwoofer level, seven's fine. Loudness is off, EQ, we'll do, I'll probably do a bunch of that stuff later. Display illumination controls, you can actually shut apparently them off. Gamma day, gamma night. That's the screen. Night brightness. We'll turn that down at night. I mean, that might have probably made it to where you can't see a bunch of stuff, but there's our Bluetooth. Supposedly. Oh, here we go. Panel. Go ahead. Is there a way to adjust it? LED illumination. That's yellow, which yellow actually doesn't match the dash too bad. Wallpaper. Can you actually choose a wallpaper? That'd be kind of cool, like your own picture. No, apparently not. Not a, not too crazy, not surprising. Bluetooth, don't have any Bluetooth. And then your camera, we have return rear camera off. Parking assist guidelines, you can adjust them. But rear view delay, that's kind of cool. But yeah, we got all that stuff. You can turn the front camera on, rear camera on, all that stuff. But I don't have cameras, so I'll shut that off. And so yeah, cool. I'm just happy to have Apple CarPlay back. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a little speed up of uh, this. Go ahead and shut the radio off. Put it back in park. Shut the radio off. And we are now in daytime mode, so the illumination works. If you pop that off, and get and see how we can... Ooh, it does pop off, so cool. That's pretty simple. Now I'm going to set it back here where I won't get hurt. All right. Now we're turning. It does kind of... Ooh, Boss Elite Audio System. Let's go ahead and turn the other lights off. So that should automatically bring... Yeah, brought it into daytime mode. Unlock my phone to start Apple CarPlay. Cool. So now we're back to that. Unfortunately, you're missing some of it. Apparently we, so apparently, yeah, my, I was in the camera app on accident, but yeah, I do kind of miss some of that, but for the most part, I do see everything when it's in park. So that's kind of nice. It does stick out the dash quite a bit. 
but that's not a, not a big deal. Like I said, I can still reach. I know that's hot all the way over there and cold all the way over there. I can still see my air conditioning buttons pretty well and adjusting. Pretty much I'm either here in the middle or on my face. But it spends most of its time in defrost mode in the wintertime and face in the summertime. It does kind of block the vent a little bit. Happy I didn't go with the 10 and a half, or 10.1 because definitely would not have had much space in the dash for that. So we're going to pick this up, put my string wheel back where it goes. Yeah, that's where it's supposed to be. Go ahead and grab my CB mic. This might be a problem. No, that actually still works pretty good right there. Cool. That kind of makes me happy. Huh? We'll go ahead and show you guys. The down here, don't mind my, all my Subway napkins and all my stuff down in there, but that's my uh, USB port I put in there, so it's down in here. I'm going to go ahead and tie this all up make it and make it nice and tidy, and same with the backup wire, and then we'll worry about that when we get, uh, get the backup camera installed, but for right now, this is going to work. I can throw the wire out the back of the console, set my phone up on the, the, that'll go back where it's supposed to go. I can go ahead and set my phone up on the console, where I can throw it back up in its little uh, stand that I have over here. And uh, it can set up there, be its little stand, and I can have my GPS while I'm cruising down the road and have a nice big screen for GPS and can even go in and check out my calendars it's, tomorrow is valentine's day so you know this is going to go up wednesday so it'll be already past valentine's day so yeah i've got audiobooks i've never actually done audible on apple car play so yeah so these are some of the books i've been reading uh wise guy is the book that inspired the movie uh goodfellas so i've been enjoying that watched the movie hundreds of times i bet but uh, have not actually listened to the book, so I'm uh, listening to that on Audible. So it's pretty cool. I can actually add, uh, access Audible from Apple CarPlay and Playbooks as well. I don't think I have any books on Playbooks. No, and Zoom. I've never used Zoom. I, yeah, I'm not even signed into Zoom. I could probably get rid of that app off my phone anyways. But yeah, we got uh, it installed. So yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, probably give you guys a little update on this radio a little bit later on, too, because we'll see how it uh, lasts and how everything goes. So we'll catch you guys in the next one, and uh, have a good rest of your week.